here. First of all, we get some data. If we're going to make a process adjustment, we're going to go back to our press in our die and uh, our material supplier, and we're going to make some sort of change. What are we going to base that change on? Just the fact that we, we looked at the panel and we didn't like what we saw, and there was a little bit of loose metal over here, and there was a little bit of a start to a wrinkle here, so we're going to come over here and tighten it up to pull on that a little bit harder. How, how do we know how much uh, change to put in? Are we, are we just going to shoot from the hip, or are we going to get some data? And that's, that's really the key. key. If you're going to make a, a process adjustment and make some sort of important decision, let's base that on data and not just our opinion. Now, the second reason for learning about the science of all this is just better understanding. You can, you can have a better conversation with people when you can talk about the transformation in strains. And so uh, well, let's, let's get into this. Circles. Why would we use a circle? Well, we begin with a circle, and we stretch the metal. Remember from the material properties class, there's some calculations that we could do. If the circle gets bigger and the circle is larger, excuse me, then we can calculate a positive engineering strain. So we have the final length, which is longer than the original length, and we can calculate a positive engineering strain. If the circle is smaller and there is a reduction in that circle as it you know forms an ellipse, we can calculate a negative engineering strain. So we've we've got uh, We've already got uh, the tools for calculating those strains if we, if we know what size circle we put on and if we have a way of measuring the ellipse. Every ellipse has two diameters, a big one and a small one. And we, just by definition, always refer to the large diameter as the major diameter and the small one as the minor diameter. So if there's always a major and a minor diameter with an ellipse and the circle will always deform into some sort of an ellipse, and, and by the way, if the circle deforms into simply a larger circle, that's just a special case of an ellipse where the major equals the minor, then what have we got? We've got strains in both the major and the minor. So to remind you of how we calculate that strain, we would take that change in the dimension divided by the original dimension. And by change in dimension, we mean the final minus the original length or diameter. Then we just multiply it by 100. And then we can say, well, we've got 5% strain, we've got 10% strain, or what have you. So let's take a look now at that ellipse again. Major strain is the strain that we would calculate in the major diameter um, dimension of the ellipse. So you've got an ellipse. You find where its diameter is the largest. You calculate the strain right there where it's the largest, and we, by definition, call that the major strain. And that's just simply the major diameter minus the circle diameter divided by the circle diameter. And we multiply it by 100 just so we can avoid writing 0.05 for 5 and that kind of thing. Now, we repeat all this. So we, we put a circle on there. We'll talk in later classes how the circle gets put on there, but there's a circle on the blank, there's an ellipse on the part, that minor diameter, we measure it, we compare that minor di diameter to the circle diameter, and we calculate the strain. There's n nothing more complicated about this than, um, than a couple of subtractions and a couple of divisions and remembering multiplying.